Hello, 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 Cowboys Nation, and welcome to Believe in the Dallas Cowboys, featuring myself, Jeff Cavanaugh from 97.1 The Freak. Cavanaugh! And my dear friend and badass human and former Cowboys wide receiver, the great Jesse Holly. Oh, Jesse Holly went 77 yards. It must be a reality show. And per use, we're brought to you by our friends. At Bet Online, your number one source for all your basketball info, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, the latest matchup reports for this year's NBA playoffs. Bet Online, your sports intel headquarters this season. Got you covered for all your insider sports wagering needs basketball, MLB, NHL, golf, UFC, boxing, whatevs. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your home. Get in the action today. Head to the website or use your mobile device to join. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, to receive your 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. Hi, Jesse. What's up? Nothing. I've just been hanging out, monitoring OTAs. Monitoring, and, uh, but not monitoring, but monitoring. I've been monitoring, but not monitoring, but yes, monitoring the OTAs to see if there's really anything to learn. And I'll be honest, at this point, it's tough because McCarthy's tired of getting in trouble at OTAs, so they ain't really doing much. Uh, shout out to Schoonmaker being in a boot at OTAs already. That's cool. An injured uh, player being injured. Schoonie's already in a boot. Uh, I did enjoy seeing some takes on their – wide receivers because i wish that they had even more than what they already have uh i wish they had somebody fighting michael gallup for snaps but i've enjoyed reading people's optimism about simi fihoko and jalen tolbert whether i share it or not <laughs> but it's fun it's fun to see what storylines people can come up with out of otas because honestly they ain't doing a whole lot yeah. they're just kind of chilling yeah so what are you monitoring while you're not monitoring while you're monitoring well you know, monitoring, but not monitoring, but monitoring. Um, OTAs have changed, right? The life of what, I hate to sound like this, but I, I do sound like this. Like the old guy in me remembers when AT, OTAs and mini camps and all that kind of rookie mini camps, like it was a fight for your life. Like it, like that, it was pads, it was two-a-days, it was a real deal type of situation. That That's changed um, significantly. Now you get in trouble if you touch each other. You you get in trouble if you touch each other. The, the time is too long. Like, all of those things now. But I think, you know, one of the things is is seeing what players take the next step, right? What what players will take the next step? The, not, not the rookies. The, those guys have a long learning curve, and you will want to hear great things about them. But, you know, what players are out there that you're looking at, you're saying, Okay, this was a guy who kind of got some reps last year. This was a person who was in the mix last year, but now they're taking that quote unquote next step. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest things for the Cowboys. And for me, uh, and I've said this for a couple of weeks now, I think the one player defensively that has to take the next step to really help turn this team into a, or can turn this team into a serious contender, Sam Williams. I agree. Yeah. I think that's huge. I mean, you talk about a dude that's got all the natural ability in the world that in his limited snaps last year still made an impact on a whole bunch of different plays. Uh, and just the value of the position. If you can have a dude that can seamlessly sort of start taking the baton from tank to be another real legit, not just a guy that can kind of rush the passer, but also is a strong like bull. Uh, <laughs> boy, if Sam, if Sam Williams could become your next tank, I would be, I would be loving that. And here's what I get flashes of the thing that makes me football horny, right? Is I, I, I played against a New York Giants football team who had a package called the NASCAR package. And this was a, this was a package where you had a young JPP, you had OC Humanure, you had Chris Canny, you had Tuck, you had um, the linebacker was Antonio Pierce, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. This, they would line these guys up any and everywhere. They'd be standing up, they, the amoeba type defense, and you never knew they were coming from. And they would even leave these guys on the field, like if they just so happened to make you punt, they'd leave those guys on the field and punt rush you. And I remember being a personal protector being like, oh, really? <laughs> like, 
you know, I'm going through my count and I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at LP Lattisor and I'm like, that's Chris Canty right over top of him. Right. And there's another guy to his left. That's Osin Yemenyoro. I'm like, this is not going to end well for me. And I just pray that J that LP takes the, the bigger of the two. But if you got a guy like Sam Williams, just, just, just walk with me. If Sam Williams takes the next step, you can now at times put a defense out there on the field that has either Mozzie Smith or Hankins, right, as your one technique. And then you line up across the board, Micah Parsons, Sam Williams, Tank. You can go Damone Clark. You can go, you can go, you can go Jabril Cox, Leighton Van Der Esch. And now you have a bunch of speed, athleticism, and strength coming at you, twisting and turning, and who's dropping in the coverage, who's blitzing. I think those type of things I get a little bit excited about, and I think it all hinges upon, because Micah's going to be fine wherever the hell you play him, right? Tank, if you leave him on the left-hand side, he's going to be fine. The rotation between Mozzie Smith and, and Hankins are going to be okay in that, in that middle portion. This all is contingent upon does Sam Williams take the next step. Strongest bull – he, you already know he's going to slam somebody, so the aggression is there. If he can understand it, the biggest thing for him is going to be understanding. This is why I always say about veteran defensive guys, I always want veteran defensive guys because they understand keys, formations, lineups, down and distance. They know where to go, when to go, how to go, and to get to their spot before the guard or the tackle or the center are able to reach them. If he can make that turn, now, now you're talking about something that could be really special with Dan Quinn's kind of, you know, uh, a mad scientist brain conforming all of these, forming all of these things to, to give you many different looks. Sam Williams is the guy, if he takes the next step, this thing can get real scary real fast. Well, I think you need as many studs as you can get up front these days. Not that it's ever been any different, but as you watch what's happening in the NFL where more and more defenses, more and more of the time, are saying, look, we're not playing cover one. We're not playing cover three because quarterbacks are too good mm -hmm. and we're going to play too deep. That's how we're going to play. Yeah. And so I got to survive in the box without a lot of bodies. So the dudes that are there, you have to be some stout sons of bitches. Yeah. Uh, and Mozzie can help. And Sam Williams, that's a strong dude. Tank, that's a big, strong dude. Micah, here's your eight extra pounds or whatever. Uh, the only other name I would throw out on defense, because I got to tell you this, I'm a little scared about Jordan Lewis because I saw the quote from him about his injury and like the doctor said, yeah, he's never seen one like mine. And I'm like, that's not a good thing to hear about a football player. Not ever. And he was talking about how it felt like he had a new foot. I'm like, okay, sounds like I'm ready for Deron Bland to take the next step and, and be a nickel and improve on what he did a year ago. Uh, Cause that, that the words I read about Jordan Lewis, I just went, that's not something I want to read about from a football player. Like, yeah, my doctor looked at him and goes, man, this one's new to me. Deron's playing a lot more outside than he is inside. Is he? Yeah. Okay, well, that, you know what? That works for me. Like, they have so many dudes. The thing is, their secondary is so freaking stacked. The only thing I worry about is outside if Diggs or Gilmore gets hurt. And if they think Bland can be the third outside guy, I think that's great. If you can throw Jordan Lewis – and or Izzy, and if you need to, Bland. Like, they got a lot of dudes. The only thing that I wonder about is who's the third guy that's going to play outside if somebody goes down. And if that's Bland, Kelvin I feel good Joseph. about that. Kelvin Joseph. Kelvin's in the slot now. Oh, yeah, that's right. And Deshaun Wright's watching OTAs. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Very confusing. Uh, offensively, I don't think you have a lot of options for the guy to make a jump. And so I'll throw out the only name I can really think of. Like maybe you could throw out an offensive lineman. I just don't know who. Ornia. I don't believe in that. That's the same thing as like we're gonna get we're it's it's already starting and we're gonna get semi fihoko hype. I'm not I'm not doing that with a third year fifth round pick who's never contributed. I'm not doing it. Now with a second year third round pick, sure. Jalen Tolbert's the guy where you just have to hope that it was a, you know, a mental thing and trying to process everything about coming into the NFL, small school to NFL, and that he was kind of drowning in it and that now he's not because I, I watched both of those guys in college. Jalen Tolbert can freaking play, man. Mm -hmm. He can play. So if he can absorb it all 
and just go out there and play and be a real life dude and fourth wide receiver, that would be a lot of fun. I don't know that it makes a giant difference in terms of how your season would end if he didn't have that happen. But I think having a fourth legit wide receiver would be really, really nice. And if Jalen Tolbert can be that, sign me up. Yeah, and when you look at you know the reports, I was reading I was reading something from uh, from No C, Patrick Walker, and he was talking about the contributing factors of what adding Brandon Cooks to that locker room, what it does. Um, it gives you the ability to have a veteran guy who understands. And I thought I thought the greatest value that Brandon Cooks brought was the fact that he's been in multiple offenses that he's played. Um, with multiple um, Hall of Fame quarterbacks, speaking of Drew Brees and and and, and uh, Tom Brady, he succeeded in all of them. He's seen differences from the NFC and the AFC, and been able to maneuver through them. I think that type of knowledge being imparted on a kid like Jalen Tolbert does wonders. Because here's the one thing I think people fail to realize sometimes. You look at a guy like C.D. Lamb, and this isn't a knock at C.D. Lamb, but just because you accumulate years in this league does not mean you're able to assist another player. There are special dudes who are able to come in and actually help a younger player by giving them information and really coaching them up. Some players just don't have it, and it's not a knock against anybody. Some some guys just like – I'll give you an example. Like when I was playing, there was Patrick Creighton and then there was Roy Williams. Both guys respective in their own places in the league. Both guys, when I got to, when I got to the Cowboys, both guys had significant amount of time in the National Football League. You know what Roy Williams told me when I asked him for help? They give you the same damn playbook they give me. That's <laughs> what he told me. It's what he told me. And it wasn't that he was being a, a, a bad dude, but he's like – Hell, I don't know. I, I, listen. I got stuff to do. I'm at work. But then I go to Patrick Creighton, and he's able to break it down to me in a way that is understandable to help me. Sam Hurd was like that. They were able to give me information about the – stop. They were able to give me information about the position to help me. And it wasn't that Roy Williams did not want to help me. Roy's a great friend of mine. He's a good dude. He just couldn't. He just didn't know how. He didn't know how to sit down and be like, hey, young fella – Look at this. He was just more so like, man, hell, just what does it say? Is it a 12-yard comeback? It says a 15-yard uh, – run it, damn it, run it. Do that. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm asking for – like, he just couldn't give it to me the way that another player could. And so when you have a guy like CeeDee Lamb who's been in the league for three or four years and you're like, okay, he's, he's, a, he's a, a vet. He's a vet who's been around, who has success. And you're like, well, why can't he help Jalen Tolbert? Some guys just can't. They're just like, hey, I just – it's like well, Michael Jordan doesn't make a good coach because he goes, hey, just turn around and fade away and shoot it and make it. They're like, Mike, hey, just jump from the free throw line and, and do like uh, – uh, Yeah, jump. do what I did. Yeah, do what I did. It's like that doesn't yeah. quite work for me. So so hopefully Brandon Cooks being inserted to this locker room now gives Jalen Tolbert that extra big bro to help him with the things mentally because physically he got it. We know that you don't get to this point in time in your career in this league if you don't have the physical skills. For him and a lot of young guys, it's, it, it comes it comes this part. It's the neck up part, and I think Brandon Cooks will help him significantly with that uh, of, of the playbook and just as the term that he used. He told Brandon Cooks, told him to flush it. Whatever happened last year, flush it. Let it go. It's not. It's, it's, it can't help you now. Let it go. Work on everything that you can focus on now and get better for the for the new season. I mean, you could just bring DeAndre Hopkins in to help too. If you or just wanted, you could just is, bring yeah. DeAndre Hopkins in. Yep, that works. Yeah, if you want to get people help. Cause, and, and now here's my thing. First, I'm going to start it with this. It ain't happening. Yes. It, everything that I hear is it ain't happening. Don't worry well, about Jerry it. Jerry said that he would write any check, the amount of check, to win a Super Bowl. That's what Jerry said. That's what he said. Yeah, he, he said that. But saying. then you have to factor in that you know how much they hate old people. They hate old people. And they are old people, but they hate old people. So the fact that they brought in Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore, I was like, hell yes, they actually brought in veterans who have done something in this league. Holy crap, this is wild. And they're not washed yet. And I think that applies to DeAndre Hopkins. And they got over $20 million in cap space. And I'm going to be honest, the NFC sucks. The NFC sucks. There's three teams in it. Eagles, Cowboys, Niners. And the Niners somehow keep being good, even though they don't even have a quarterback. There's only two good quarterbacks in the whole freaking NFC. And it's you and the Eagles. Okay? 
this is Super Bowl time. Yeah. And I watched you lose because you didn't have enough playmakers. And now they have enough playmakers, but I don't want enough playmakers because I have enough playmakers with $23 million to spend. And for probably 12 of that, I could bring in DeAndre Hopkins on a one-year deal. He'd love to get a giant payday again one day. It ain't going to happen this offseason because if anybody wanted him at $19 million, they would have traded for him. So nobody wants that. Uh, the When... when Odell Beckham signed for $15 million is when the Bills backed off trading for DeAndre because they were just like, that's absurd, and he thinks he's worth more, and we're not doing that. Uh, like, load the damn wagons. Yeah, I don't want to count on boot dude, second-round boot guy at OTAs and and Jake Ferguson to like be playmakers, and I don't want to count too much on Michael Gallup being able to be a legit, I'm a whip your ass threat if people are paying attention to CD. No, more and more and more and more and too many weapons and you can't cover us. And where's your fourth best corner? I'm a whip his ass with one of these dudes. Give me all of them. I want all the receivers. They're not going to do it. I'm just saying. I'm with you. I think they got Gilmore and they got Cooks and they were like, oh, we met our old people quota. Quota. That's it. That's it. No more, no more old folks. We we got two. We got two. So for all of you who want grizzled vets, we gave you two. We're not going any further than this. Yeah, and then they go to what they do. And look, I have no problem with this. This is how sports works. You can pay in the NFL anywhere from, depending on how much they make, six to ten dudes. Rest of them are going to be guys on rookie deals and guys who don't make a lot. That's how it's going to be. Um, and so they like their, like, they like Simi Fihoko versus Jalen Tolbert. Because if one of them can do the job, they're like, hell yeah, and they get the fist bump. Like, remember how we made that draft pick and he's out there doing good? That's awesome. They don't want to admit too much that like, oh, we could use some more help and some more help and some more help. Uh, but go ahead, guys. Just do it. Just do it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it, but just do it. But they're not going to do it. I just want everybody to know. But also go ahead and do it. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all I want to do. All right, so let me ask you this question. At, at what point, because we, we get to this point where when you don't have all the weapons – um, like, does Dak have to make up the rest of that? Yeah, oh, Dak has enough. Like, you won't get excuses for Dak for me this year unless they can't block. Dak has enough. I just want it to be overwhelming. Right. I, I want teams to line up and go, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, want the, I want the team's best corner to look across the field and go like, oh, man, our fourth guy, he can't really play very well, and he's covering DeAndre Hopkins. Because I, think, I think for me, it's not – it's not I need four 1,000 yard receivers. It's when it's it's the third quarter of the second round of the playoffs, and I need to play. It's it's third and nine, I, and and it's the second. It's the third quarter of the divisional round, and I need um, I need to play, and I want to have enough weapons where the defensive coordinator is saying, "Who do we guard?" Is it Hopkins? Is it Cooks? Is it Lamb? Is it Gallup? Is it Tony Pollard out of the backfield? Like, I want that confusion. I want yeah. enough playmakers that when it, when it matters the most, because a lot of times it comes down to in the playoffs, it's I need a play right now. I need a guy that's going to be able to give me that play right now and not, not yeah, we're going to double CD Lamb and we're going we're gonna to take our chances with Jake Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want. I'm with you. I want it to be overwhelming. Where a defense coordinator goes, it's third and seven, and if they get a, if they can make a play right here. This could break our backs, and it's, it's, it's New Hopkins for a 39 yard gain. Well, the it's probably gonna be 11. He's more of an 11 yard guy now. I mean, yeah, we're talking about you know across the board, man to man. He breaks the tackle. You know, okay, he, yeah, okay, broke tackle. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I just want him because when the dude, when he doesn't get open, uh, he still catches it. Yes. And that's great. I like that. When Noah Brown don't get open, it's a pick. When DeAndre Hopkins doesn't get open, he plucks that thing off somebody's head and tells them they suck. And that's deflating to cover a guy and they keep catching the ball. When you're like, but I'm doing my job really well. And he keeps patting me on the head and saying, nice job, Tiger. <laughs> you're the man. All right, Jesse, I'm done. I'm rocking and rolling. You good? You happy? Uh, Yeah, I'm good. I'm All good. Right. Listen, Cowboy fans, hi. It's us. Hi. We're the problem. It's us. This is Believe in the Dallas oh, Cowboys. Before you get out of here, I just want this is, a, this is another reminder. Guys, while all the narratives and stories going around, this is still OTAs. Don't, don't. 
Don't dive into the pool just yet. This don't is, hype anybody up in May or June. This is still the underwear Olympics, so I don't want to hear the, you know, Semi Fajoku is on the way in, and, and this guy is on the, you know, and, and just, just. I love No C, and he's good as he's good as hell at his job. I see, I see what you're football. doing, No C. I see you're trying to start a semi train. I see what he's you're doing. doing. I just want you to know, I ain't getting on it. P Dub has been on this semi train for a while, so he he can't get off now. Like no, I'm he not, can't get no. off now, and he got. He got to ride this. Th- he has to ride this thing into semi actually becomes a player. He can go. I told you so. Or all right, I messed this one up. I'll, 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 my next pet cat, I'll get that one. When the rookie contract runs out, yeah, and he's working with us, <laughs> uh, it'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, remember you have no idea what anyone's going through. So be cool, to everyone. We love you. Bye. Eliminate the contingencies. <laughs>